Hello friends. So today we gonna discuss this bi-weekly contest 23. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it. And if you like these explanations, please hit the like button. So let's get to all the four questions in this video. So these are the four questions. Okay. So first question is count largest group. You are given an integer n. Each integer is from 1 to n and is grouped according to the sum of its digit. Okay, as you can see, we have to do like a for loop from 1 till n and you have to group all the numbers from 1 till like for example in this 13, you have to group all the numbers according to the sum of their digits and return how many groups have the largest size. Okay, cool. So as you can see, uh, 1 and 10 has the total sum of integers equal to 1, it has 2, 3 and so on. And as you can see, there are 4 groups which has the size 2, which is the largest size. I hope you understand. In this, there are 2 groups of size 1 and because size 1 is the largest, there are 2 groups of size 1. So you have to return it. So what you can actually do is, you can just brute force iterate over all the numbers from 1 to n because n is sent to our 4. You can easily iterate over every number, find its sum of digit, make a map for all the possible digit sums, push that number in it, and while pushing every number, see what is the size of that group. Because when you are finding out the total sum of the digits, you can easily just push that in the map and also storing out what is the size of this group size. What are the max, like how many numbers are there in this group? So as you can see, if we iterate over 1, you will see that there is only one element in 1 when you go iterate over 1. Then you move for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till 9. Now when you insert 10, you will see that this group size increased to 2. So now till now the group size has become 2. The maximum group size is 2. But we don't know how, how many groups are there of size 2. But we definitely know that there is only the maximum size of the group is 2. That's why we don't have to iterate over the group again. And that's in the code also. So what we will do is, uh, we will make a map of int and vectors. Int is the total sum and vector is the all the elements of that same sum uh, of digits. And then maximum stores the maximum size of the group. Then we iterate over from 1 till n, find out the sum of the digits. And this is the function to find out the sum of the digits. And then for finding out the sum of the digits, what we will do is, we will push that the sum of the digit and the number in that. Now what we will do is we will find out what is the size of that group in which we have pushed this element i. If the size is greater than maximum we update the maximum such that we find out at every number inserted what is the maximum possible number of the size of that number or, or, or the, the group and then we will iterate over the map and find out how many groups are there whose size is equal to the maximum size and will increment the count and that's the answer for the first question. Okay, now we will move down to the second question. This is a pretty good question in which they are given. Yeah, so in this question you are given a string s and an integer k. You have to construct k non-empty palindrome strings using all the characters in s. Okay, so s is a given string and you have to form like Two, like k which is equal to two, two non-empty palindromic strings if you can form such strings then you have to return true else you cannot form as you can see in this Anna can be taken and uh, this can be taken as this form and thus you can form two strings uh, which are palindrome and that can be formed so if you just take to the example let me move here if you take in this example First take out the, you can make a frequency count array and find out the frequency of every al alphabet so that A appears two times and uh, like N appears two times, B appear one time, E appears two times and L appear two times. Now the interesting fact to see is if you are forming any um, like any uh, palindrome sequence then the number which are in pair so that a appears in pair n appear in pair or like it can be four also like a appears four times 
then you can easily put it around any alphabet as you can see if i just put b here i can put a and it will be still be palindrome so it means that you can cover up with this pair one on the left and one on the right and it will remain to be a palindrome i hope you understand so then but the problem comes with the number of odd characters so now you can just count out how many total number of odd characters should be there if the total number of odd characters is less than or equal to k so what does this mean okay as you can see in this a appears one time z appears one time k appears one time and these are the pairs s and r appear two times so that this can be used as a pair now if a appears one time and k is equal to two like you have to form two palindrome sequence you can form one palindrome so that you take only a and pair up or like put one s here one one was s here then i can take z i can put one r here and one r here but now k is left i cannot put k anywhere not here or not here and you cannot form a palindrome by just taking care k if k equal to three then you can take this k and i can put just k and it is also a palindrome so i just need to find out the total number of odd pairs or like how many their characters are there which are odd and if the total number of k or the number of palindromes we want to find out it should be like the number of palindromes we want to find out and the number of characters which are odd the number of characters which are odd should be less than or equal to k and that's the main logic for this question uh this is the condition in which the k is greater than the total length of the string if there are like we want to find form 500 palindromes and the string length is just 2 how can we form so we just return false and then we will first make the frequency area of all the characters make the total 0 and we will iterate over all the frequency array of all the characters if it's not 0 in it means there are characters in the string which are present there and if it is odd then we increment the total so if the total is less than or equal to k which means we can form like palindromes then it's true else you turn false i hope you understand this question also let's move to the next question next question statement states that given a circle represented as radius x center and y center and an axis aligned rectangle represented as this okay so now you want to find out return true if the circle and a triangle overlap with each other else return false as you can easily see this question might be difficult but it becomes easier because the input is in int form it means that every uh, coordinate is in integer form so now what you can easily find out is if these are the if like you are given the coordinates of this and this so you can easily find out the coordinate of this and this and the, all the coordinates of the rectangle and then you can easily check for every coordinate because the coordinates are also very less 10 to the power 4 10 to the power 4 so it, so what you can easily see is for every coordinate in the rectangle okay you can check whether the distance between that coordinate and the center of the circle if like if at any point as you can see it becomes equal to or less than then the, then this radius because if this goes inside if this circle overlap then the distance between this point and the center becomes less than or equal to the radius then they are overlapping else they are not overlapping i can also show you so if this is a circle you can use just this formula this define the x1 y1 and this define x2 y2 and if you just square them you can take this is the under root of whole but you can take the square on both side so this is less than if this is less than or equal to r square it means it is inside because the rectangle if present then the any point here in the distance between this point and this point is equal to radius if it goes inside if i take any point then the distance between this point and the center will become less than radius i hope you understand but because if any point is away or like if i take this point 
the distance is always greater than the radius so then this point is already out okay so that's the main logic you can iterate over every possible combination from x1 to y x1 till x2 for j y1 to y2 you just find out the distance between that point and the center and if its length distance is less than or equal to the radius then it is inside so return true else it is false okay now moving on to the last question last question is a greedy question in which you are given that a chef has collected data on the satisfaction level of n dishes so there are n dishes and you have collected the satisfaction level chef can cook any dish in one unit of time and uh, what you can do is lifetime coefficient of a dish is defined as time i and the satisfaction return the maximum sum of the lifetime coefficient that the chef can obtain after dishes are prepared dishes can be prepared in any order so the main question statement states that these are the satisfaction level and you have to find out the lifetime coefficient which is the time taken and the satisfaction and each dish is prepared in one unit of time so if you like prepare example if you take this minus one dish which is a satisfaction of minus one if i take this dish and cook it first so it will take one time and our lifetime coefficient value is minus one into one now the next dish i will cook this dish now if i cook this dish then the total time i have taken is two because i have taken one time for this and one for this so the total time taken is two and i multiply it with zero now i cook quick this dish and it will become five into three and it total become 14 which is the maximum value which we can get so the main thing is we have to just pick up some numbers and multiply it with a uh, order in which one two three we have to multiply it in order such that the value we get is maximum as you can see in this we can take out the minimum value so as you can see if everything is uh, we can take it in any order but as you can see here also we will try to take the maximum one at the last because then a satisfaction coefficient value is greater as you can see in here also so the, so what we can do is we can sort the error first so i will take your drawing board this is the this example if i sort it it become this now if i just take all the dishes now the last dish will have the maximum value so we will want our dish to be the maximum value so it will only happen if you take all the dishes and take them in the in this order because this is sorted now if we just leave one dish then we, we are eventually decreasing other values dishes because if we just not take this value this will become one this will become two three and it will become four but we want it to be five to be the maximum value so if thus thus we have to take it every one and because it is sorted the least one will become the less one the least number will take the least least time and if you like multiply these the, these numbers and add them it will become minus 3 now second case can be i will not take the this number because it is decreasing our answer so if now i will take this to be 1 this to be 2 this to be 3 this to be 4 now if i sum multiply them and sum them it become out to be 10 now this also is decreasing answer so we will take this to be 1 2 and 3 and this is turns to be 2 be 14 which is our answer so i hope you understand what we are doing we are actually greedily taking all the numbers and we are just multiplying it and because the length of n is very small we can do it just brute force way so we can just sort the uh, like s first take out the maximum value which we can get okay then iterate over n and what we can do is we can take a k because we will take this number from 1 2 3 so k will used to help us to store on which time we are then we'll, we will iterate from i till n and for every i we will start our loop from j equal to i till n because for every point we will first take this and go to the end now take this go to the end and then what we will do is we will multiply it with k plus plus because k is increasing with every time and take out s of j and incrementing the sum if now after this loop we will finding out the maximum is equal to the maximum till now and the global maximum 
and just return the maximum. I hope you understand the logic of all the four questions. If you still have any doubts, please mention down. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, keep coding. Bye.